Hi, uh, this is Greg with Pod 366, and uh, I'm with Giles, and we're back after a short break, and we have with us our guest this week, uh, Jacob Clemmer of Fantasia Film Festival. Hi, Jacob. Uh, hello, thank you for having me today. You're very welcome. Um, so, first off, uh, let's talk a little bit about you and the festival. So, can you give us a beef, uh, beef, a brief explanation of uh, how you came to join the festival and what it is you do for the festival? Um, sure. So, I used to be uh, a student journalist writing for a newspaper at McGill University up here in Montreal. And Fantasia was one of the first uh, festivals I ever wrote about. Uh, and I would come back year after year because I was really drawn to uh, the breadth of titles and uh, and how strange they were. And I was always under the impression that at this festival, you have the chance to see things that you normally would not get to see anywhere else yeah. um and so after that i applied to work in the international press team uh, and i'm still working in that team today uh, i'm a coordinator of international press why that makes it make sense that you're talking to american <laughs> film reviewers then perfect um and so fantasia is a really large film festival, both in the number of attendees and the number of films. Um, so does your particular job uh, keep you busy all year? Is there an off season or are you working on looking at films all year? Um, there is an off season um, after the festival ends. Um, there is a bit of downtime, but then once things start getting announced again, it picks back up for me. And um, so do you get a chance to see uh, all the movies either or, or the majority of them either before they start screening or, or as they're screening? Um, in theory, I could. But there are so many movies, especially this year, that um, I'm not sure I would be able to uh, unless I spend all day every day watching movies up, up until the festival. Um, and, you know, that doesn't sound so bad, but unfortunately, I do have to do, do work on those days, too. Yeah, right. When the when the uh, festival is actually going, you're going to be busy uh, coordinating people, I guess so. Um, and how many movies do we have this year? Do you know offhand? Uh, offhand, I know that we have over uh, 150 features and over 300 shorts, uh, but I'm not sure the exact number. Oh, I think that's a close enough. Uh, yeah, okay. I, those are bigger numbers than I've seen recently. So excellent, I'll, I'll be busy then. And um, this year, uh, so there, there are sort of like always little uh, themes that run by. And uh, this year, uh, one thing you've got is a lot of uh, movies uh, from, uh, and I probably don't know how to pronounce his name, but Jiraj Herz, uh, the uh, Czechoslovakian. And there's another Czechoslovakian, at least one more Czechoslovakian movie uh, that's there. So that's a special feature you're uh, running uh, this year. And also, it's uh, the festival is honoring a certain individual actor who we're very fond of, uh, Nicolas Cage. Uh, so how do how do you go about uh, not that you do it, but how do you know how they go about picking the theme of this episode or this this episode, this edition of the festival? Uh, well, I know that with Nicolas Cage specifically, it's because he has this new film coming out, Sympathy for the Devil, that he's really proud of, and that it felt sort of natural to uh, to commemorate his career, especially because last year, it was uh, the year where we honored John Woo. Of course, John Woo and Nicolas Cage have collaborated many times. Uh, and so that's how that's how that was decided. And with the with the Yuraj Hertz uh, retrospective, really, we are looking for movies that have been recently restored, movies that have just had their prints 
come into like uh, a certain restoration house and okay. that we can screen before anyone else gets a chance to see them. Uh, we're really we're really fond of doing that. Now, of the movies you have, um, a number of them would be uh, specifically Quebec Quebecois. Always, you always have a, a specific uh, section or focus on on those movies from Quebec specifically, correct? Uh, yes, we do. Um, our opening title this year is a is a large premiere uh, called Red Rooms uh, from a director who actually studied at Concordia University, where the festival uh, projects many of its films. Great. So they're kind of um. When you talk about what you're looking for, it seems to me you have that the Quebec angle you have. And I think the name suggests kind of the other types of movies you're looking for. For the Asia, there are large, always a large number of Asian movies here. And I believe, if I'm not incorrect, that it started as a specifically Asian festival and Asian cinema festival. And then the fant, the fantasy <laughs> uh, element. Um, is is that how would you describe the slate of movies uh, that you guys feature? Um, it's a lot of, of well, it's primarily genre cinema. It's a lot of action, a lot of horror. Horror is the big one, um, and it's a lot of films, as you said, from Asia, South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, other other places like that. Uh, we are looking for things that are very attention grabbing, very eye catching things that are really like sort of things that are odd and interesting and not likely to be shown anywhere else. Uh, we're also looking for things that people will come and see, cinephiles uh, who live in the city and who come in uh, from out of town, things that they will really, uh, things that they will take to. Do you yeah. know well, before Giles asks his question, let me ask one more. Do you know, uh, do you have estimates on how many people attend each year the festival as as just as paying customers going to see the film? Um, I do not know off the top of my head how many people uh, come to the festival each year. Um, it's a very, uh, it's very popular, um, but in terms of the exact number, I'm not sure. There, there are always huge lines. A hundred thousand. One of my, uh, one of my colleagues just gave me the number. That's believable, and it, it is. I've been there. It is huge. Not as often as Giles, but when I was there, it was huge. Giles, did you have a question? I think. Yeah, I it's just. Um, I know that uh, there are. Let's see. I guess different panels within your crew that uh, focus on different kinds of movies. Like there's Rupert Bottenberg, and he focuses on animation. I know Celia Pouzet has her, shall we say, particular focus. Um, are these the groups that, uh, help with the curation of the, uh, you know, when you're, you're going about collecting, as you said, like, a was a hundred, some odd, uh, 150, um, feature length. And so that I believe, you know, I've sort of pieced together from discussing, uh, the festival with the various people that I see, you know, every other day, since I'm there for the three weeks, um, can you tell us about the specific teams you got going? If I'm on, uh, if if my uh, presumption is correct here, I'm I'm kind of curious about more specifics about the crews you got in the uh, shall we say harvesting process for getting the uh, titles together. Mm -hmm. um, your assumption is uh, correct. Uh, you mentioned Rupert Bottenberg's section, the Axis section for animation, um, and Docs from the Edge as well, um, the documentary section. Um, other large sections that we have are Camera Lucida, which is run by uh, Ariel Calle, and it's about, uh, it's sort of the more art house and uh, experimental section. Uh, we also have Underground, which is programmed by Justine Smith, uh, and it's specifically like films that were produced without the help of like a major um, a major studio or films that were produced for very low budgets or by people who've perhaps never made a film before. Uh, and we also have a new section that was just inaugurated last year uh, called 
Septentry and Shadows, and that's programmed by Carolyn Morissette. And that's uh, specifically our Canadian genre section mm -hmm. uh, that programs films from Canada. Uh, and then, of course, we have our main slate of titles, uh, which is programmed um, by uh, our other programmers like Mitch Davis, uh, King Wei, and um, uh, Nicholas Archambault. Oh, yes. Okay. Hey, yeah, I recognize all those names. Fantastic. Um, is okay so that's uh, yeah, that's uh, good to confirm there because I know that um, uh, with a festival this broad as you say it's all genre genre but that is um, a well in many ways a helpfully ambiguous term since it can you know catch all kinds of things but yeah there's definitely um, I can see the different pockets that I experience as I'm wandering through. And, you know, usually I found the organizers of a particular screening are generally kicking around, you know, hanging around there, you know, during or after the show. So it's uh, good to further my knowledge of uh, what's, what's going on behind the scenes there as I have, as I will now be coming the seventh time, which is nothing compared to some reviewers I know who are going, but uh, still something I'm pretty pleased with. I think that's very impressive to have gone seven times. I went once and would love to go back, but since you volunteered to do it, um, and you're much closer. It's I, just, I, I am a three and a half hour drive from the event. So even though the 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 rail, the, the forest fire situation has uh, prompted the rail route there to be cut off, but uh, hopefully my Greyhound bus won't sink into overly hot uh, asphalt on route so well, that's that's actually something I'd, I'd forgotten about because it it got really bad down here earlier in the summer and has cleared up how is the forest fire situation right now is it affecting the montreal area um it is uh recently it's not nearly as bad as it was like two or three weeks ago the air quality has returned uh to you know normal staple levels um the, you know, the one big effect that we're having from it is that we're getting a lot of rain now. Uh, on, it's an unseasonably rainy summer, uh, but that's never stopped us before. No, no. It's, uh, as long as you can breathe, I hope. <laughs> so what is the, um, what what's like the big centerpiece, Consider the big centerpiece film, or, or if you have a couple this year that you think is going to draw, draw eyeballs? Well, we do have a couple that are uh, that are very uh, that are very important. Obviously, Sympathy for the Devil, which is uh, Nicolas Cage's film, um, which is going to world premiere here. Um, our opening film is uh, Red Rooms, uh, directed by, as I said, a Concordia uh, graduate. Um, very, very anticipated. Um, and our closing film, We Are Zombies, is also going to be uh, rather large for us because it's directed by the, the collective RKSS, who have had some films at the festival in the past, notably Summer of 84, um, which I think played in 2018 or 2019. Um, this was their first audience. They came to Fantasia many times when they were studying. They, um, they had a lot of short films at the festival, but this is the first film of theirs that we've world premiered. So we're really excited for that, for that one. Um, we also have uh, the movie Hippo, which we're very excited about, yeah. sort of uh, the debut feature from uh, Mark Rapoport, who um, has acted in a couple of things, but this is his first feature film, uh, sort of like a uh, dark comedy, like uh, coming of age film, kind of like a, like Todd Salons, but it has a very interesting visual style. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say there's just one centerpiece of the festival. We have sort of, we, we sort of have multiple centerpieces. Yeah. And um, what about I also uh, besides movies, what kind of events or things uh, are planned for this three weeks upcoming? Uh, well, we have our uh, artist talk with Larry Kent, a uh, famous uh, pioneer of uh, independent cinema in Canada. He's going to be coming and talking about a lot of his films. We have uh, the RKSS Masterclass. Um, we have a book launch that's going to feature uh, readings by a number of people, people like Jim Baruchel, people like uh, C. Robert Cargill. Um, and of course, we have our... Uh, um, th those are the big three. Uh, 
there's perhaps others that I'm forgetting and that I'll regret not mentioning right now. But those are the those are three that I'm very excited for. The book, well, the book one in particular, uh, we are uh, interested in. I'm always a, it, what it is, is the book is a um, collection of fake AI generated movie posters that then people have written uh, uh, synopsises of, of fictional movies uh, based on these these posters generated by AI. It just sounded like a really fun and cool uh, thing. And I know the guy who uh, put it together, uh, Pat Tremblay, uh, talked to him before. So we're looking forward to that one as well. Giles, did you have a question? Oh, uh, there was just, um, yeah, one, one uh, sort of non-cinematic thing that I believe uh, happens every year is uh, the, the uh, Cabaret of Curiosities as uh, something I know is a recurring, not quite movie screening event, and also uh, taking over from the DJ XL5 Zappin Party, which was was last year. The last I, I, I can't quite remember because I, I was I thought I'd heard that he was stopping uh, that little uh, program of his. If you have uh, more information on that or its legacy um yeah he would uh I, I i don't know how many years that the the that that event ran for but it was very a very long running and very popular but we're excited to have uh that we're excited to have that short block here um 16 short films uh that are all being presented uh that you know they're they're sort of they sort of run the gamut from like lo-fi indie dramas to like animated uh features to you know zo zombie cinema and everything like that um i am very excited to attend it uh and it was sort of a it was sort of a, a collaboratively programmed uh short block uh we have a lot of really uh good short blocks this year um and uh, another thing about the Cabaret of Curiosities that's very interesting is that it has short films from the UK, uh, Germany, Spain, France, uh, Quebec, the rest of Canada, and the United States. Uh, so it's it's very eclectic, not just in terms of genre, but in terms of where the movies come from. Yeah, yeah, I do try to cover is uh, certainly the animation shorts because i'm always always happy to watch cartoons uh, are there any other short blocks you care to do a special shout out for um yeah so we have the born of woman short block this year which is very sort of like uh they're, they're all directed by women and they're all very sort of uh experimental and bold genre films. Uh, we have uh, Circo Animato, which as you said, uh, if you are an adult and you want an excuse to watch cartoons, that's a perfect one because it's um, 10 uh, short animated films. Some of them uh, I, some of them I've seen and they're really good. Uh, we also have uh, Fantastic Weekends, which is exclusively uh, Quebecois short films, um, almost all uh, in French. And uh, we're very excited about that. And uh, uh, there's things that go bump in the East as well, which is our specifically Asian uh, short block, which is no less eclectic than any of the others in terms of uh, in terms of genre and style and everything else. Yeah, I've caught that a few times and was always very pleased. And it's always uh, obviously perfectly programmed late in the evening. So, you know, you, you emerge from this theater into nighttime Montreal and everything's just pleasantly off. Uh, one thing I've never attended, but certainly want to advertise on your behalf for, uh, shall we say, anyone with children is I know that uh, it's like, what, three times uh, on a weekend, each weekend for the festival, there's the my my first Fantasia event that uh is uh like a children friendly variant of the festival as a whole from my understanding that um i i think would be a good way to get people hooked into this world of cinema uh yeah i i've also never had the chance to check out my first fantasia uh usually because it comes at like a pretty busy weekend but it is lovely by all accounts uh and uh has a lot of 
very interesting animated uh, films this year in the, uh, uh, oh, the title's in French, so I'm not going to do a very good job saying it, but the first weekend of my first Fantasia. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, uh, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm there for the three weeks and, uh, I think the, the, the only time I ever spent a day not doing anything was when like a number of people toward the end of last year, I got COVID and, uh, was kind of stuck in my, my room the whole day. But other than that, there's, yeah, there's something that can take up, uh, you know, 12 to 14 hours any given day. If you're of a mind to take in as much cinema as you guys are putting out for us. So it is a it's a three week long festival, so it's very important to pace yourself. <laughs> um, so we uh, I'd like maybe to see if you can recommend something. We go. You know, it's three, six, six weird movies. We like weird movies. Now, I know to the average person, probably everything you screen is weird to the average moviegoer. Um, but we're looking for the weirdest of the weird. Is there something on the schedule that you think uh, Giles needs definitely to check out while he's there? One, uh, one film or maybe more that uh, you can recommend that you may not be aware of? I have a few. Um, there is, in the underground section, there's a film called Booger, which is uh, directed by Mary Dodderman in her, in her feature debut. It's about a woman who... Uh, is bitten by her roommate's uh, cat uh, who has fled and she tries to find the cat while slowly turning into a cat. It's very odd, very strange, very sort of like uh, a heartfelt in the end. It's in the underground section. Um, there's also Apocalypse Clown, which yeah, is I, I, comedy. You know about it already, I'm sure. I, I, took, a, uh, I took a peek at the list. That looks... For the listener, it is a, a comedy about clowns in the apocalypse from ireland uh, i haven't yet seen it i'm very excited to go see it i might save it uh not watch the screener go to the screening itself because i'm very interested in how people are going to react to it um and another film i want to highlight is i don't know if you guys reviewed uh the movie called beyond the infinite two minutes in oh, yeah, uh, 2020 I, yeah i saw and uh, made a yeah, small review for it yeah Mm -hmm. So we have an, uh, the new film from that director, which is called River, and it uses that format, but uh, in a new setting with like a new story and uh, sort of takes it uh, in a much different direction than that film does. And it's also, you know, it's strange in the same way that that movie was strange, but it's also one that I want to highlight on this, uh, on this podcast. Cool. Yeah, happy. Um Okay, so let me run run some other movies I just noticed. We obviously haven't seen anything. We're just going off the, uh, uh, you know, the description that's on the website. See if you know anything about them. There's a movie called Divinity from Eddie Alcazar that uh, the programmer wrote up some comparisons to uh, a high bar, Eraserhead, and Tetsuo. You heard of that one? Yes, I have heard of that one. I'm also very excited uh, to check that one out. Um, it's in the... Uh... One second, sorry. Oh. Let's talk among ourselves quietly. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no, I went through the, the list and like, oh, wow, this is even just some quick glances I saw, found about 15, 16 things that look like likely uh, promising candidates, so. I'm restricting uh, myself to features, so. Oh, me too. The, uh, yeah. the the Clown Apocalypse one, I think, is a short. No. No, it's uh, a feature. It is a feature. Yeah, because I yeah, did the uh, feature um, filter. Uh, uh there there is a tornado warning going on right now oh my goodness so um i might have to cut out of this podcast early but i can give you another like five or ten minutes anyway i'm excited to watch divinity um <laughs> giles, giles uh, we gotta hurry up giles right. uh, which one was the one you were most interested in and uh you you highlighted oh yeah vincent must die um Oh, yeah. That uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be fun or weird or hopefully both, but uh, that 
you know mm-hmm. you can always count uh, on the French that one the un-american that one i've heard is uh very interesting very sort of like absurdist uh it's up for our, our cheval noir prize um, oh okay. and I'm very I'm excited to watch that one as well uh I don't know where it played first I know it played somewhere uh I think it played at con actually um and it's it 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 got really really good impressions uh from that festival Uh, and I'm really excited to watch it uh here as well that's sort of a theme for these movies that I'm excited to watch them well, I guess before the tornado, uh, the Cheval Noir, that to me is uh, probably the best prize I think that you guys give. What uh, makes a film qualified to be in the running for that? Um, I am going to ask uh, one of my colleagues about that, actually. Huh? Do you know what uh, qualifies a movie to be in the Cheval Noir competition? Um, uh, it's um, well that that one is programmed by uh, Mitch Davis and it's uh, movies that him and the other programmers sort of put up uh, as their sort of choice entries that they ah. that they want to highlight well they, they'd uh, they'd be good people to make that decision yes definitely huh? cool one or two more movies uh, I'd like to ask about. We we have somebody who's seen it and is a huge fan of Hundreds of Beavers. Uh, yes, uh, Hundreds of Beavers is another one that I was going to bring up uh, to you guys, actually. Um, I have heard it's like uh, I don't. You guys must be fans of Guy Madden, one of the Absolutely. one of the famous like strange Canadian filmmakers. He has given his full endorsement to Hundreds of Beavers, <laughs> uh, and uh, that one I'm really excited to see. It's part of the underground section as well, um, and uh, we uh, yeah, I've never I've never seen a fur trapping uh, thriller before, and I think it's a very it's a very rich uh, subject. Uh, sort of specifically Canadian in a way uh, that that I find very uh, very interesting. Even though I think they're they're not Canadians, aren't they? Michiganders. They are Michiganders. Uh, uh, it's South Canadians. Team, but, yeah. Well, I, the 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 fur trading industry is sort of a historically important one in Canada. Uh, there is a lot of Midwestern Canadian uh, uh, crossover cultural crossover yeah, the, the prairie area yeah mm-hmm. and yeah because i actually saw lake michigan monster i think it was the festival just before corona shut everything down for the two and a half mm-hmm. years and so yeah. i i have an idea of what kind of movie i'll be stepping into for that one and greg you had a one other i was interested in was uh mutant aliens because it's from bill plimpton who we like a lot oh yes uh, mutant aliens um yeah. In the animation section, programmed by Rupert, I would love to. Uh, I I wish I knew more about about this one. I'm excited to watch it, as I am excited to watch all of them. Very unique animation style, uh, and uh, yeah, there's, yeah. There's a. I think I might have to go very soon. Um, so, yeah, that's a that's a good one. Yeah. All right. Hey, well, you know, there's a tornado, there's fires. It's a, you know, a, a, the apocalypse is coming. So if you got to go, I say you got to go. We've about done our time. And thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you very it's much. A, just a treat to uh, talk to somebody from Fantasia. We just love Fantasia. So thanks a lot. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, Giles, I'm sure I'll see you soon. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, we, we wish you both a, a lovely festival. And uh, as we say before every screening, bon cinema. Bon cinema and, bon cinema and stay best safe. Of luck with the tornado. Mm, thank you. All right. We're going to just say goodbye. Giles, you done? I'm done. Yeah, we're set. Right. So we'll, we'll let you get to shelter. Okay. Right. Well, thank you. Signing off. <laughs>